I'm going to take a little thinner, a little bit of this. Too dark. You can take it away to the extent you want to. Should it be a little bluer? Yeah. Pretty, isn't it? It's pretty. If you're an artist and you're trying to make a painting, it has to have wonderful qualities as a visual object. Something that compels you to look at it and stay with it. Oh, I like that. I've been teaching at UNH since 1986, the fall. My teaching style happened to be more out, kind of out there, more of a performance-y thing that I would do, as well as a one-on-one. -on -one. So I tempered that performance element with more close work. So, um, and, and I would liken teaching classes of art to riding, driving a, uh, an ocean liner. You have to take the boat out. And if it's a small class, it's a small boat. You have to turn it around in the harbor and then you have to bring it in at the end of the semester. So it feels like you're leading along a pack of people and they're in different places in their development. So each person you have to know pretty well in what they're doing. Commit. Commitment is always the best technique in all things. Let the other people who don't commit suffer. You're in it all the way. Look at you made that red. Thank you, God, for speaking to you in your sleep. Good, keep going. My experience as a student, number one, wasn't just to learn and paint and draw, but I, I truly felt at a certain point when I was working at a certain level, a certain a more advanced level, in a classroom I had what I would consider a spiritual experience, working from life, painting, looking, mixing color, painting, looking, mixing color, painting, looking, mixing color, painting, mixing color. Painting, mixing, looking. Uh, I became part of a flowing continuum. And uh, if I could, and not that I would give that to the students, but if I could induce some kind of discipline in a, one of my students or any of my students to have a similar experience, it would be, to me, giving them something of significance. Not just the simple tools of making a picture that someone might like and hang on their walls. So that's part of the, my desire to be a te was part of my reason to be a teacher. Uh, if you ask me about my leaving my office, that's going to be difficult. That is difficult because I uncover daily pictures of my children when they were young or my daughter dancing or, my, or an old poem my wife gave me and I'm boo-hooing to myself. So I will miss people with a caveat that I would rather not be distracted from my true work, which is my painting. On the other hand, I'll miss the students. I'll miss that every fresh crop that comes through the door is always marvelous. And um, uh, there again, I feel like my time of life is not going to go on forever. And what provoked me to retire was to get into my studio before I was so decrepit or some disease overtook me, which is another story of being old and it's contrary to what our society wants us to do, which is to stay in the workforce until you drop. I know I don't want that. I'd rather have more poverty-stricken years in my 90s and richer, more productive years in my 60s doing what I was supposed to do. I don't want to change it. I'm just living with this rather extraordinary thing. I mean, I see little, you know, I see incipient growth, like moss, and I see trees, and I just, I think it's kind of wonderful the way it is. So I'll see how wonderful I'll feel about it. But that's retirement. I don't have a rush. I'm not rushing. I can sit on this egg forever. <laughs> Let it hatch. <laughs>